Find and Use Your Inner Power by Emmett Fox, dedicated to all men and women everywhere who believe the will of God for man is freedom, health, and harmony, and that these things can be attained by learning the laws of life and by applying them. Know that knowledge is power. Preface, the laws of thought are the laws of destiny. Whatever you believe with feeling, that you bring into your life. These little essays are intended to instruct the reader in basic spiritual truth and to furnish material for short meditations. They were published once a week over a number of years. The subjects are usually handled in a light and amusing style and often deal with familiar incidents in everyday life. The reason for this policy is as follows. The writer has always believed that fundamental spiritual, philosophical, and metaphysical truths could be stated in the plainest and simplest language so that any intelligent child could understand them. It is true that most writings on these great subjects have been very obscure and full of technical jargon, but the present writer believes that that is unnecessary. Certain subjects, such as the higher mathematics, for instance, must remain out of reach for the layman, but this is not important because they do not concern his practical life. The understanding of spiritual truth, on the other hand, is not only the concern of every man, but is a vital need of his life. And it must necessarily, therefore, be possible for him to obtain it in a form that he can use. The loftiest and the most profound spiritual knowledge alike must be capable of being understood by any reasonable intelligent person over 10 years of age. These great truths are actually revealed to us not in the pages of inaccessible treaties, but in the seemingly petty and unimportant details of everyday life. Such practical details, the problems and experiences of day-to-day -day living, present the questions and also furnish the answers to the great problems of human life when one has the spiritual key. The writer tries as far as possible to avoid the use of technical terminology and never employs a word of three syllables or a word of two syllables will do. Each of these sparks illustrates one or more of the laws of psychology or metaphysics. Try in each case to find out for yourself which is the particular law involved and then see if you're using the law constructively in your own life. If you are not, you must change your habits of thinking without delay, for the laws of thought are the laws of destiny. A small spark can start a great fire. That can be good or that can be bad. This is the beginning of Mr. Emmett Fox's 222 sparks. Find and use your inner power, spark one. Take it easy. Don't hurry. You're going to live forever somewhere, and in fact, you are in eternity now, so why rush? Don't worry. What will this matter in 20 years' time? You belong to God, and God is love, so why fret? Don't condemn. As you cannot get under the other fellow's skin, you cannot possibly know which difficulties he has had to meet, how much temptation or misunderstanding or stupidity within himself he has had to overcome. You are not perfect yourself and might be much worse in his shoes, so judge not. Don't resent. If wrong has been done, the great law will surely take care of it. Rise up in consciousness and set both yourself and the delinquent free. Forgiveness is the strongest medicine. Don't grumble. 
consume your own smoke. Your own concept is what you see. So treat and change that. Don't grab. You cannot hold what does not belong to you by right of consciousness anyway. Grabbing postpones your good. Don't shove. You are always in the right place at the right moment. If you don't like it, change it scientifically by rising in consciousness. This will be permanent. Two, cafeteria. Don't wait for something to turn up. Don't be content to let things drift along, hoping for the best. It is not spiritual to, quote, put up, end quote, with inharmonious conditions. If the conditions of your life are not to your liking, you must get to work on your own consciousness and, by raising that above the outer picture, cause those conditions to become something near to your heart's desire. And you must keep on doing this until you find your true place. I had an amusing experience when I first came to America, passing an attractive looking restaurant. I went inside and selecting a table, I sat down and I waited. Strangely as it seemed to me then, nothing happened. I sat there and I continued to wait, indefinitely as it seemed. I could not understand the reason for this neglect. All around me, people were enjoying their food, and only I was left out in the cold. After a while, the truth of the situation slowly dawned on me. It was a cafeteria. The system had not yet made its appearance in England yet in those days. I then quickly realized that while there was plenty of food of every kind to be obtained, one had to go forward and claim it for oneself or go without. The universe is run exactly on the lines of a cafeteria. Unless you claim mentally what you want, you may sit and wait forever. Of course, you should not claim in detail that is outlining, but you must positively claim health, harmony, and true place if you really want those things. Number three, the worm gets ideas. A wonderful and the most important lesson that we human beings ever have to learn. You all know his story. He is a beautiful butterfly now, but he was not always a butterfly. No, indeed, he began life and he lived what seemed to him a very, very long time as a worm and not a very important kind of worm either, what we call the humble caterpillar. Now the life of a caterpillar is a sadly restricted one. In fact, it could be taken as the very type and symbol of restriction. He lives on a green leaf in the forest, and that is about all he knows. Then one day, something happens. The little caterpillar finds certain strange stirrings going on within himself. The old green leaf, for some reason, no longer seems sufficient. He begins to feel dissatisfied. He becomes moody and discontented. But, and this is the vital point, it is a divine discontent. He does not just grumble and complain to the other, to the other caterpillars saying, nature is all wrong. I hate this life. I can never be anything but a worm. I wish that I had never been born. No, he is discontented, but it is a divine discontent. He feels the need for a bigger, finer, and more interesting life. His instinct tells him that there, where there is true desire, there must be fulfillment. Because, quote, where there's a will, there's a way, end quote. And so the wonderful thing happens. Gradually, the worm disappears and the butterfly emerges, beautiful and graceful, now endowed with wings. Instead of crawling about on a restricted leaf, he soars right above the trees, right above the forest itself, free, unrestricted, free to go where he likes and see the world 
and bask in the sun and in fact be his own true self, the free and wonderful thing that God intended him to be. Now, this wonderful story is intended to be the story of every human soul. It is up to you to develop your wings by the scientific use of creative imagination so that you may fly away to your heart's desire. Number four, an all-in policy. What has your religion done for you? For years, probably, you have been attending church, reading spiritual books, studying the Bible, and so forth. Now, I suggest that you have a spiritual stock taking. Ask yourself, what has your religion done for you? What difference has it made in your life, in your home, and in your affairs? How much peace of mind has it given you? How much courage has it given you? How much understanding? How much opportunity for service? For make no mistake, real religion does give all these things. If your spiritual stock taking does not turn out to be satisfactory, or if your religion is not working in this way, if only examining your life, you find there are a number of places at which you are not demonstrating, if certain needs are still lacking to you, if there are still negative things that refuse to go, I believe that you will find the explanation to lie in the following law. What you put into your religion is what you get out of it. If you put 5% of yourself and your life into your religion, you will receive a 5% dividend or demonstration. If you put 20% of yourself and your life into your religion, you will receive a 20% demonstration. And until you put 100% of yourself and your life into your religion, you will not receive a 100% demonstration. A complete all-round demonstration calls for an all-in policy. Number five, saluting the Christ in him. We often hear the expression saluting the Christ in him or quote seeing the Christ in him. And we may well ask ourselves what the phrase really means. Well, it is simply the practical application of the rule of Jesus Christ. Judge not according to appearances, but judge righteous judgment. Each one of us has a divine self that is spiritual and perfect, but that is never seen on this plane. That is the true man, God's man, and is what we call today, quote, the Christ within. It is the real you or the real him, or the real her. Now, whenever you dwell upon or realize the presence of the Christ within, within yourself or within anyone else, outer appearances begin at once to improve. And both the amount of the improvement and the rate at which it takes place will depend on the number of times that the indwelling Christ is, quote, saluted or realized and the degree of realization attained. This saluting of the Christ need take only a moment and it never fails to benefit the individual concerned and the person who does it as well. When someone seems to be behaving badly or when you hear bad news concerning him, salute the Christ in him instead of accepting the appearance. When a given condition seems to be inharmonious, whether it is an organ of the body, a business arrangement, or anything else, see God's working in it. Better still, golden key it, and the saluting of the Christ will heal it. If someone displeases you, silently salute the Christ in him and say aloud whatever seems best. If someone says, Quote, John Smith is sick, end quote. Salute the Christ in Smith and know that in reality he is spiritual and perfect and refuse to accept the negative statement. 
If someone says something against John Smith's character, salute the Christ in him, refuse to discuss the matter, and of course, do not repeat it. The more often you salute the Christ in others, the sooner you will find it in yourself. End of part one. Find and use your inner power by Emmett Fox. One through five of his 222 sparks. Remember, love yourselves and love each other unconditionally.